And I seen Kendall say we're gonna start with D Mac. You know, that's my go-to. That's my moderator right there. That's my dog. You know what I'm saying? That's my dog. Me and Kendall. Me and Kendall. It's just like rush hour. You know what I'm saying? Push a goddamn button. You know what I'm saying? That's how me and that's how me and Kendall are. We be tag teaming this shit. That's how we are. So we can start with D Mac. Now, D Mac story is interesting because we realized that d Mac's story really falls on the hands of all of the adults around him. Kate's an enabler. JP's not really a father figure. Now, he's a figure. He's a male figure. See, there's a difference between a father figure and a male figure. See, me, I'm a male figure. I'm not a father figure. Now, I can give you advice, but I ain't no father. I can't give you sonly advice. Like, I can't tell a kid what to do because... I ain't got no kids, so I don't know what the proper things to tell the kid. Like, me personally, when I see D-Mac, the first thought in my mind is D-Mac, go get in the streets. See, I'm a male figure. I'm not a father figure. See, JP wants some out of the streets. That's the difference between a father figure and a male figure. Now, a male figure, all I can do is give you guidance. All I can do is give you guidance. Now, as a father, it's up to me to lead you. Now, they always tell us that, hey, it takes a village. It takes a community to raise these kids. But what about d Max village? What about his community? What about the people surrounding d Max letting this young man go off into these streets and do Lord knows what? Season one, we found d Max. He was a kid with no haircut, no parts in his dress, and a Mac 10. That's all we knew about D-Mac. And now we're looking at D-Mac and wondering, is he going to make it out of this? But then a little light goes off in my head and says, ding. And I said, what the hell was that? They said, Mo, wait a minute. You're forgetting one thing. D-Mac killed a police officer. I said, oh, man, I forgot all about that. All right, bro. D-Mac killed a police officer. Man, I forgot all about that. At first, I was putting the blame on all of the adults. But this is power. And in power, we don't give a f what the adults do. Every character is held accountable. When old girl Raina got knocked, we all said that Raina shouldn't have been out there in grown folks' business. In the power universe, we don't give a damn if you a kid. In the power universe, if you were old enough to handle that steel, which D-Mac was, which D-Mac did last week, then you were old enough to get this smoke. We're starting with D-Mac, and we got to take it all the way back to the house because he killed Finnegan, a.k.a. we labeled him a low-down, dirty shame. <laughs> a low-down, dirty shame. A low-down, dirty shame got popped last week. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Good old Vic. He about to bring down the whole organization. All right. Now, the beginning of the episode, we all know what happened. Uncle Tommy, just two weeks ago, Uncle Tommy, you can give my guns, man. Then the next week, pow, shoots a cop with the gun that he was trying to get back from Uncle Tommy. Now we're trying to figure it out. What am I supposed to do, Uncle Tommy? He had that thing out, man. He was about to shoot you. What you want me to do? Now, Tommy's looking at him. He's like, you know what? You did the right thing. You definitely did the right thing. It was just to the wrong person. Now, this is one of those instances where you can say, well, let me let me word this correct. Right person, right place. Typically, you hear wrong place, wrong time. Well, in this instance, right person, right place, right time. See, the right person was Bennigan. The right place was in the barbershop. You see what I'm saying? The right time was when D Mac needed to get a haircut to go link up for a date. Pink pow, boom, game over. Low down, dirty shame is gone. Now, Tommy is part of the streets. Tommy knows what's going on here, and he's trying to tell D Mac, calm down. But Uncle Tommy, what was I supposed to do? They were shooting, and I, he had a gun on you. I didn't know, Uncle Tommy. I was just trying to go on a date with Genesis, and I seen a gun, and I was getting a haircut. And I had to shoot, Tommy. It was either him or me. What was I going to do, Uncle Tommy? So Tommy's like, I, I understand, but sh keep, keep that shit quiet. We know that JP be upstairs hating. JP be upstairs hating. He's like, just, just, just shut the fuck up, man. You run your mouth too much, your daddy upstairs. But I ain't even noticed this. There's a body on here outlined in chalk. Did y'all notice that? 
I just seen this. There's a body outlined in chalk on his shirt, on his hoodie. D-Mac is different. See, D-Mac falls into that category of being different. You know what I mean? He falls into that category, be different. Damn. Now, in this situation, looking at Tommy and how he's handling it, I'm like, all right, cool. Tommy understands that we can't overreact to this. This isn't the first time that Tommy's killed a cop. If you guys remember, Tommy Egan back in the day, I know y'all don't want to hear this. Tommy Egan back in the day once killed an unarmed police officer. You remember that? Tommy also killed an unarmed lawyer. Tommy also killed an unarmed pregnant woman. Tommy also killed his unarmed unborn child. Tommy has killed a lot of unarmed people. So he understands. Take a deep breath. Everyone listening right now, what I want you to do is just, if you haven't hit that like button, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. And right after all of that, I want you to inhale through the nose, two, three, and then exhale through the mouth. You got to calm down in these situations. When you start losing it and freaking out, that's when everything goes haywire. Just always remember that in the power universe, if you take a step away, breathe, you can work your way through it. Now, DMAC. He heard Marshall was getting money out here. He just called a body from a cop, but he still wants to be on the block. But Tommy's telling him to lay low. And we also get the text message from Diamond telling him, hey, we good to go. But Uncle Tommy, what am I supposed to do now? Just sit in the house? What about TikTok? Can I get on TikTok, Tommy? Unk, come on, Unk. Tommy ain't trying to hear that. Tommy ain't trying to hear that. And D-Mac is sitting here, he crying. <laughs> what up, DeMarcus? What up, Tamika? We just talking about D Mac and the troubles that he done went through because his story is a nice one. But Tariq is. I'm trying to think. Are there any teenagers in the power universe that have done the right thing? Other than Lauren Baldwin, name one teenager that has done the right thing. Other than Lauren, name off one teenager in the power universe. You can't name off any. Every teenager in the power universe does some fucked up shit. Now, I exclude Lauren because she's a civilian. She did what she had to do because she didn't have the drugs. She actually wore the wire, but we get that. She's alive and she's better and she's out of here, but she held it down. Tariq, drug dealer. Brayden, drug dealer. Kane, drug dealer. D-Mac, shooter. Marshall, shooter. Drug dealer. There's no teenagers. Well, Raina, how old was Raina when she got popped? Weren't they like 12, 13? She may be a one, but she was sticking her nose in grown folks' business. R.I.P. to Raina. I'm trying to think. Even Bruce Sandria. Well, Bruce, yeah, they about 19. Shit, she set up Lauren. So what? We got Raina and Lauren. That's the only two? Raina and Lauren, those are the only two that we can that, that we can think of, right? Malcolm Lauren's ex. Oh, I forgot all about him. Man, fuck him, though. He was in D.C. or something, wasn't he? And he wasn't really in the power universe. They got him in and out. You know what I'm saying? He was in and out. It wasn't no, excuse me, it wasn't no sticking around for him. But, yeah, we can include Malcolm. But for the most part, we know that there's three real niggas in the power universe. Mo is one of them. We trying to find the other two. D-Mac ain't one of them. <laughs> D-Mac ain't one of them. When's the next time we see D-Mac? Oh, we see D-Mac. Wait. No, we see D-Mac when Tommy snatches him up. We actually see D-Mac talking to the police, but we don't know if D-Mac told the police or anything. Let me see. But yeah, D-Mac and them right outside. Now, let me ask y'all this. Do y'all think that D-Mac is telling the police anything? Cash? Man, look, Cash was born into that snitch life. Cash was born into that snitch life, so we don't know. I, I, we don't know much about Cash. For all we know, Cash is telling right now. What Cash? About 14 now? Yeah, Cash was... Man, we don't know about Cash. We don't know about Cash. Y'all got me on that. Y'all got me on that one. Cash, all right. We can go ahead and include Cash. 
But D-Mac is outside talking to the police. Now, he's not talking to the police, but there's a huge police presence, and they pull up on him and ask some questions. Now, we don't think that he's giving away any information. D-Mac ain't like that. Plus, he's with Marshall. We know Marshall ain't going to say nothing. Marshall's going to say some slick shit. But just like Diamond took care of Bennigan, Diamond wants Tommy to take care of D-Mac. Now, I'm going to talk about what could potentially come out of this a little bit later on as we progress in D-Mac's story. Because one thing about Tommy, Tommy always leans on you to do exactly what he wants you to do. But it, have you realized Tommy never does anything that someone else asks, and it always leads to some trouble? It always leads to some trouble. Shout out to my dog, Brillo, man. If you ain't subscribed to Brillo, the big reviews channel, subscribe to him. Man, hit his cash app up, man. YouTube and got him again. Support my brother, man. You know what I mean? He said Diamond was the MVP, and he's never been a Diamond fan. Not saying he wasn't a fan. He was more of a Gennaro fan. But if he's showing love to Diamond, that shows you that Diamond did his thing. D-Mac is out here talking to the police, and Diamond handled Ben again. He wants Tommy to handle D-Mac. D-Mac is out talking to the police, and Tommy didn't even know. Do you guys believe that he's seen D-Mac walking up? Is this Tommy looking at D-Mac? Is this Tommy looking at D-Mac when he walked into the building? Because remember, Diamond told him to handle D-Mac, and that's when he goes to the house next, and he you know, puts him against the wall, kind of like a Tariq St. Patrick, like my dog Brillo's thumbnail for today. He ain't Tariq. You know what I mean? <laughs> he ain't Tariq. Oh, so y'all do... So do you think he recognized him or do you think he just thought, man, maybe that looks like D-Mac, but he had to go and talk to Diamond? Oh, Dre said the police. Well, yeah, the police were riding by, weren't they? They were deep out there today. Let me see what we got. You might be right. The police did. Oh, so they, they swooped back around. Because this is the police truck that they're going to be talking to. And right when this truck goes by, that's when Tommy gets out the vehicle and walks up. So he's probably looking at the police, seeing them, and then they made a loop around once they seen D-Mac and Marshall, thinking that they were going to give up some information. Oh, okay. Well, since he didn't handle that there, he crept outside. Remember, he looked out the door, but he didn't want to make a scene. One, because this blue Mustang is the hottest thing on the block. There was just a shootout a couple of weeks ago, a couple of episodes ago, where a little girl died and a blue Mustang was shot up. Well, this Mustang don't have any more bullets in it, so I don't know if it was this one or not. Hey, thank you, DeMarcus, for that $5. Was Kane a snitch when it came to Ramirez? Man, you know how I am. Listen, if you're giving information to the police, I don't care if it's a dirty cop or not, if you give the information to the police, and they can arrest somebody with that information that is snitching. There, I don't, I don't understand. We go through all these different rules. If you give the police dirty or not, if you give them information about somebody else to get them locked up, then hey man, you tell him, bro. Like he told Ramirez that him and his mom had something going on, but now she's working with Tariq on the college campus. It's kind of the same thing that happened with Effie. Effie didn't directly tell the police, but she told the principal. Now, there's a track record of Tariq in records. That's why in season two, no, season one of Ghost, he, when he went to trial, Jenny Sullivan brought that up because it's documentation. And they always say if it isn't documented, it didn't count. Well, Ramirez had information about Tariq. Nothing came out of it, but he did tell a police officer on the opposition. Same thing with Raquel. I know she's talking to a dirty cop, but a dirty cop can still arrest people. You see what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. <laughs> that's how I look at it. I mean, like I said, I got, man, y'all see my paperwork. Well, it's not really paperwork because none of my shit. I never went to trial for none of my shit. I get up out of mine. I give me a lawyer. I don't say nothing. But D-Mac is out here talking to the police. So after this, Tommy goes to the house and he got to snatch him up because if you don't rough him up, sometimes you got to ruffle a little bit of feathers. I don't know about y'all, but this place needs to be cleaned up a little bit. There's still holes in the wall. D-Mac needs to be painting this wall. That's D-Mac's job. Instead of D-Mac being out on the block with Marshall, hanging out, trying to get at Genesis with a little 20-piece, he needs to be in here 
with a hot towel or they go rent a little steamer and they need to get the wallpaper off the wall. Now we're looking at the wrong thing because in the living room, Tommy got D Mac against the wall. What the fuck are you doing? And JP don't know what the hell going on. Tommy, let him go. Let my people go. Tommy, what are you doing to D Mac? Let him go. Go to your room, D Mac. But Uncle Tommy. Now, this is no longer D Mac's story because it takes us from D Mac to Tommy and JP's story. But D Mac's got to go upstairs and think about what he's done. And you know how it is as a kid. I don't know about y'all if y'all ever been snatched up before. I've been snatched up one or two times. But Pops realized once I got older, he can't do no more snatching. I do the snatching. But that's a whole nother story. He sends D Mac upstairs. Now, punishment for us used to be go to your room. Punishment for DMAC, go to your room. You can keep your phone. You can play the game. You can do whatever the hell you want. You can do whatever the hell you want. But back in our day, we didn't have no cell phone. We ain't had no phone service. So what does DMAC do? He goes downstairs and he's texting Genesis. Now, to all my brothers out here, to all my family members out here, to all the Moets, hey, when you send a text message, you send a text message. You wait for a response, unless it's something that was finishing off the first conversation. Now, if you ask, yo, can we talk? And there's no response, obviously that means no. Then if you respond back, you mad at me and you get no response, that probably means they are mad at you and don't want to talk to you. Now, if they don't respond to those first two, you never ever ever send that third message without a response unless it's a confirmation they call you or y'all got something set up hey this is the time we need to be there oh real quick do this you never send three messages back to back and if you look at his phone it's actually four messages that he sent and genesis never replied and the reason genesis never replied is because they don't make sega genesis no more she's not about to get played by you d back i know all the time y'all think moby giving everybody a hard time but this is d max story and i'm trying to tell you d max she ain't fucking with you right now man you stood her up man you stood her up you dropped out of school the friend was hating and now can we talk for a minute? No. Baby, are you mad, mad, mad at me? Yes. Just want to explain. Explain what, d -Mac? At this point, at this point, I don't know if on iPhones you can unsend messages, but right now just send all three of these messages. Just unsend them all. Even though even though we know you hurt, you got to send all these messages. You got to. Miles said that teen thirst. Well, I don't mind it. We've all been there before. But come on, D-Mac, you on punishment. You on punishment. And, and you sitting on the couch with the plastic on it. You sitting on the couch with the plastic. Genesis ain't trying to come over here. It's stanking here. It's like a construction zone over here. She don't want no explanation. Her homegirl's probably telling her, I told you. I told you he wasn't shit. I told you. Now, D-Mac is upset. And you know how it is. Grandma always saves the day. Even though we've known Kate to never be a good grandmother or mother, well, we never known her to be a grandma. We never known her to be a good mother. Let's just put it like that, except for, for Jamie. But she comes down here, and D-Mac, he's hurting. This is what I call a heart sweat. Now, this is very rare, but at this age, what DMAC is going through is what you want to experience early in your life. You don't want to wait till your mid-30s to go through what DMAC is going through. You got to get your heart broken around 14 to the age of like 16, 17. Anything prior to high school graduation, you want to get your heart broke. You just got to go out there and let them stab you in your heart one time. So you can understand that life isn't going to be fair. It's just not. And that's what D-Mac has to understand. But Kate is trying to right her wrongs. So she's talking to D-Mac. D-Mac, what's wrong? Grandma is, yeah, it's a girl. Her name is Genesis. She bad as hell, though. But Uncle Tommy said, I can't leave the house. Kate is like, oh, 
What's her name? It's, it's Genesis. She cool and all, but I was supposed to go on a date, but Uncle Tommy won't let me leave, and I, I can't get no money on the block with Marshall. So Kate is like, man, you know what? Fuck it. This is what we're going to do. This is what a grandma going to do. What I want you to do is go down to the corner store. Now, somebody hit me up. Let me find that comment real quick. Let me find this comment. I'm going to read it off for y'all because I ain't from Chicago. Let me see. Damn, where's this mug at? So someone sent me a message last night from the live. Let me give him a shout out. Latest comments. Damn, where's it at? Someone basically told me, they told me, <laughs> Mo, with $20, you can't get all of that from the store unless you're getting singles. Now, when they say singles, that's cigarettes. Some stores you can go into instead of buying a pack of cigarettes, they got one or two cigarettes sitting behind the counter and you could just buy them. Now they be selling them for like a dollar, two dollars. They be up in the price on them singles. But with a 20 piece, <laughs> you already know what time it is. With a 20 piece, Kate says, listen, go to the store and take as much time as you want. AKA, take this $20, bring me back a pack of cigarettes. Let's see what a uh, pack of Marlboro goes for, I guess. Oh, no, nah, she looks like she smoked Virginia Cools. Pack of Virginia Cools. Or oh, Virginia Slims. <laughs> we, don't want a, we don't want a box. We just want a pack. Do they sell individual packs of cigarettes? Yeah, a pack from $7.29. All right, bet. Pack of Virginia Slims in Chicago. If he goes down to Ryan's Liquor, if he goes down to Ryan's Liquor, he can get a full pack of Virginia Slims for $13. Now, Grandma don't need no full pack. We're going to get, we're going to get, ooh, we got some Crown Royal in here for $34. All right, here we go. Marlboro for $16.25. Camel for a carton. That can't be no carton for $16. $16 for a pack of cigarettes. Hey, Grandma, I might not be able to pick up those. Hold on. <clears throat> a pack of cigarettes, Grandma. I I can't bust that down with the twenty. I can't bust that down with the twenty and take the young lady out. Come on, Grandma. You have to break your boy off with a fifty. It's me, Darnell D Mac. So D Mac got that twenty piece. Now, as a kid, Newports. Hey, I don't know. I don't know what people smoke. I know bomb barrels. I know fucking. Newport, I mean, I know Newport's Virginia Slim. The only reason I know about Virginia Slim is I think my grandma used to smoke Virginia Slim. And the one with the goddamn camel. I don't know no cigarettes. <laughs> but she gives him a 20-piece. What y'all think? What y'all think D-Mac was actually going to do with a 20-piece? Was him and Genesis going to be able to... You can't even get movie tickets for that much, can you? Well, I guess if you get student prices, but this is the evening, so they were going to have to charge a regular price. Mm-hmm. Oh, she said the brand? I, I ain't know. I just thought she said, go give me some cigarettes. Man, you know, I don't be paying no attention like that. But $20? Man, I can make $20 work, though. Shit, I just spent... Shit, I, just, I got two new suitcases. I spent like $400 today, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was crying. I ain't wanna spend that money. Came to like three fifty six. God! <laughs> but... Shit, getting twenty dollars when you ain't got no money. Shit, Mister G, hey Mister G, instead of buying some cigarettes for her, he went and bought her a pack. <laughs> he went and bought her a pack of that cocaine. Either. She asked for yeah. She said buy some rubbers, take what you need, and bring the rest back. Well, who is Kate fucking with? Oh, don't tell me. I know we off we off a D Max story. Don't tell me that Kate's about to get up with uh Janar and them two have them a little uh matching session. You know what I mean? Hey, when I move, you move. Just like that. So D Mac heads on out. Twenty dollars in my pocket. Behind the scenes, D Mac doesn't know that Tommy is trying to handle this situation.
making plays. He already told Diamond earlier, hey, you handle Bennigan. I'm going to handle what I got to handle. So as D-Mac goes out to the park, he's looking for Genesis. Now, right now, you know, it's a kid. Back in the day, we weren't able to know where your friends were. You just had to get on a bicycle and go find where everybody was at. You know what I mean? I lived on the other side, so I had to go at least three or four blocks before I got over to where all my, you know what I'm saying, my whole crew lived. So I had to ride my bike over there. D-Mac doesn't have a vehicle at the moment, so he had to go holler at Genesis. They in the park. This is a daily park. We didn't see bodies drop in this park. We seen drugs dealt in this park. This is no place you want to be after, let's just say, let's just say it's 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Let's say 9 p.m. Now, this park, we got the elderly. She's sitting here. She's kicking it. We got the lady over here walking. We got some of the gentlemen hooping, you know what I mean? So this looks like a friendly park in Chicago, not like what you see on TV. This park here is nice. It's, I won't say it's well lit, but it's lit. Genesis and them, I guess they're doing uh jump rope or something i'm not too sure what teenagers do nowadays but d-max sees it and he's like man i'm about to go over there and let her know but shout out to big smurf c b i business he pulls up hey d-max what's happening oh what's up man what y'all been up to smurf everything good shit cbi man i'm hearing y'all get money but i'm about to go holler at shorty over here you know what i'm saying grandma kate gave me 20 piece Got to go pick up some cigarettes. Hey, you wouldn't happen to have none, on you? <laughs> so I ain't got to go to the store. Come on, Smurf. Smurf like, what's up, man? What's up? D-Mac like, man, what's going on, man? I'm about to go holler at these chicks real quick. Little does D-Mac know they ain't here to let nobody do no hollering. Big Smurf hops up. He throws him in the back of the van. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I don't know if she's seen the van. I know she heard some commotion. Come on, Smurf. What are you doing, man? Smurf, man. I can't breathe back here, man. I got to go to the store, Smurf. I was trying to holler at Genesis. Shut up. They put the little bag over his head, threw him in the back, and Genesis is looking like, was that, was that D-Mac? Did that sound like D-Mac to y'all? Girl, I told you he wasn't shit. No, it wasn't D-Mac. Last I heard, he was on punishment. So Genesis, she's looking. D-Mac's missing out on a good thing. D-Mac wakes up the next day, and they up north. They up north. He said, man, what am I supposed to do out here with all of this, Smurf? Smurf says, shit, this is your home now, but huh, answer this phone. So he pushed Tommy on the line. So shout out to Big Smurf. The Big Smurf, he moving up the ranks. This is somebody that Tommy can depend on. Shout out to Big Smurf. We had him on here. I'm going to try to get uh, a Smurf. No disrespect. Big Smurf, my bad. I apologize. CBI business. If you out there listening, Smurf, we might need you on here Monday mistakes. You might be my go-to guy every week for CBI business. We need to know what was D-Mac talking back there. Was he apologizing? Was he saying that he got in trouble for doing a little shooting? What information was D-Mac giving up in the back of that van? And the reason we might need Smurf on here, because it might be a scene that was deleted. It's CBI business. Don't y'all be trying to take my connect. That's CBI business. Smurf is open for interviews, but that's CBI business. Don't talk CBI business with Smurf. Y'all talk power business. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference between the power universe and CBI business. So if y'all get Smurf on there, I don't want to hear y'all talking about no CBI business. Y'all talk about power business, book for a force business. But when it comes to the CBI shit, that's my end right there, boss. You know what I mean? But Smurf, he's moving up the ranks. Other than Diamond, who has Tommy been working with directly? Smurf. Smurf is stepping up. Remember, Smurf was chilling in the first episode. Chewie got up out of here, but he took D-Mac up here. Now, D-Mac's looking around, and Tommy's on the phone like, nah, this is your new life. You're going to make the best of it. Now, we got bales of hay. We got farmers. We got cows. We got goat. Ugh, goat milk is terrible. But we got goats. Basically, what we have to do is get some discipline. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times, a lot of times people are misguided. D Mac, unfortunately, he raised himself. So he doesn't really, I mean, he understands right from wrong. He knew he was wrong for killing the cop, and that's why he was crying so much and he was nervous about it and scared. But this is Tommy's way of trying to get him right because Diamond said, deal with it, handle it. That doesn't mean just send them off to go to school because D-Mac, 
we already know he's probably going to be into some nonsense up here. He's probably going to be fighting. He's going to be running his mouth. D-Mac, what you up here for? Man, they, man, they tripping, man. My Uncle Tommy put me in here. My dad, JP, man. I don't even know why I'm supposed to be here, man. I don't get down with this cow stuff. They going to put, hey. I was going to say they was going to uh, give some, uh, we ain't going to say it, we ain't going to say it, but they're going to be on his ass. This is basically a boarding school. They're going to teach him some trades and shit, but he's going to be waking up early. He's going to have chores that he has to do. Well, I won't say chores. He's going to have tasks that he has to do every day. He's going to get his education. So this is actually good for him. Sometimes, sometimes you need that discipline. Great Shores Youth Academy, residence hall, founded in 1886. 1886. When was Chicago founded? Does anyone know when Chicago was founded off the top of their dome? When was the city of Chicago founded? The founding date of Chicago was March 4th, 1837. 1837. So this is what, roughly 58 years later, 59 years later? I bet. Great Shores Youth Academy. What y'all think what y'all think is going to come out of DMAC being up here? With DMAC being up here, is DMAC going to be safe? Is DMAC going to run his mouth? What is next for DMAC? He didn't really have much in this story, so he didn't mess up. He should have stayed in the house. We get that. But now he's on to his next life. Now, I guess they probably sent him up here. He might not be in like an episode or two. We might get like a phone call or JP mentioning that they're talking to him. But do you believe that they're going to show any of the show? Like what's going on with D-Mac up in school? <laughs> Big Smurf and Bones, huh? That's the thing I thought too, Kendall. When Big Smurf picked him up, I thought they were getting rid of him. I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought, I thought they were picking up D Mac and they were about to get rid of him. But I know that Kate said that she got a grandson in Ghost, so I, I knew he wasn't gonna die. But at first, when the van pulled up, I didn't know it was gonna be Smurf. Because remember, Tommy sent the text message and said, "Hey Smurf, I need you to do something for me." Now I wasn't sure what he was talking about because I know Drake and Twenty One had a song where he was telling 21 to do something for him, but we ain't never see 21 do nothing for him. You know what I mean? D-Mac will cause problems at school. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking D-Mac's about to get in here and act a damn fool. Because, I mean, what else is he going to do? You know he's going to keep the tough role going on. I mean, we were getting money back in the... No, Marshall was getting money. You weren't getting no money. <laughs> your ass was on punishment you were on punishment for nonsense the school connection oh man don't tell me they trying to elder saying that's going to be the school connection don't tell me that they trying to run some of the business up through the school now don't tell me they trying to run some of the business through the school you know what I mean d is about to lose his dreads and catch a fade, excel in the school, and there will be a time jump. See, Monique, I could see that. I don't know. Hmm. I think he's actually going to like school. And they're probably going they're probably going to do something different than what we're expecting. And what I mean by that is probably allowing D-Mac to actually hmm. learn something in school and put his intelligence to use. You know what I mean? Because he was the one doing the money. So he might excel, like you said. That's a good that's a good point, Monique. He might excel in the school and actually take it serious and help them out. He might be the one to turn JP around. Remember, JP was in debt. JP got a new club. Let's say this season they got D Mac going here, episode five. If there is a time jump, maybe in season three, when we go back to Chicago, Tommy leaving from New York, we see either either D Mac on like a break and he's helping the dad get help jp get the uh, the bar in order get the numbers together you don't know see so they can actually funnel the money because that's what tommy actually wants them to do so this might actually be playing out with what we've seen in the first season and him being out of the game but taking care of the money side 
he'll still be cool with Marshall, but hell, Marshall might end up getting popped, and this is gonna make D Mac want to stay away from the game. Because remember last week, Marshall told D Mac he's glad that he's in the house now because he knows that he's not built like that and he didn't want him to get shot. D Mac going back to Chicago, Dre is not cut, I promise. Hey, that I don't know, Trench. They gotta, they gotta let. Maybe he'll sneak out one time and come back to Chicago. But I, I don't know, man. That that's a little wild, though. You know what I mean? That's a little wild. I don't believe he's gonna cut the dreads either. I agree with you on that. But if he breaks out, I don't think he's gonna go back to Chicago. If he does, Tommy's gonna send him right back, or they'll start to explain exactly what I was just saying. Hey, look, get that education, man. If you get back, we'll have you running the bars and shit. Tommy's going to have some shit set up for him because this is his actual blood. Unlike Tariq St. Patrick, this is real blood here. And you can see that Tommy cares. It's just there's a difference between that father figure and that male figure. See, me and Tommy Egan, we male figures. James St. Patrick, JP, those are father figures. Now, sometimes the father figure is worse than the male figure, but hey, nonetheless, there's a difference between the father figure and the male figure true story i had this girl her son was i think i told y'all this it's this lady that i talked to she's in dallas she used to go to school out me and her went to school together well she got a son that graduated maybe two years ago i want to say 2021 she had hit me up during the pandemic she said mo can you explain to my son how it was like in the air force could you talk to him about what he's gonna do next mind you i've never seen this kid since since the kid was probably like four years old. Now, it ain't my kid. <laughs> it ain't my kid. But she's like, can you talk to my son? Because he's rebellion and, and she don't know what he's going to do after he graduates. So it had to be like 21. I had to tell her straight up, man. Like, I can tell you my experience. But, man, if your, if your son ain't listening to you or his daddy, that nigga not about to listen to Mo. Some nigga named Mo. He don't remember me. Look, I don't know what this kid did, man, wherever he's at. Like, there's nothing I can do. Now, I can tell him that the Air Force, if he's going to join the military, join the Air Force, the best branch in the United States military, the DOD. I know they call it the chair force, but fuck it. You get you a decent job. You get AC. You get the weekends off. You get the holidays off. Come join the motherfucking Air Force or go join the Space Force. But I think you need a high uh, ASVAB score. Nonetheless. Sometimes you just need guidance, and this is the guidance and discipline that he needs. Now, my dad used to threaten me back in the day. Well, I don't call them threats, but my dad, like, I used to fuck up back. Y'all was a grade A fuck up. Season schools, grade A fuck up. My dad used to always say he's going to send me off to a boys' school. In my mind, I was like, do it then. Do it then. But he never did, though. He never did. But that's D-Max story. He's up in school. So we do got some theories. We'll come up with something. He's either going to get in trouble down here or he's going to excel. Now, I think he's going to get in trouble first before he excels. But we should see D-Max, you know, saying, striving to be the best. <laughs> Damn, good old D-Max. Nah, I ain't got no kids, man. There ain't no kids. Ain't nobody calling me. Hey, Papa. Papa, Papa. Nah, ain't nobody calling me dad. Mm -mm. Nah, not me. Not me. <laughs> All right. Who we got next? Who we got next? D-Mac, we got him out the way. We got the kids out of here. Now we can go talk about the adults and what needs to happen. Because D-Mac, him and his junkie grandma, that's a combination that we were not expecting. You know what I mean? Elder said, I'm working on the script now. Well, I mean, shout out to my dog, Detroit Kings. We were bullshitting today, going at each other in the uh, in the Discord. They were filming season three, but season three of Force, it was halted because of the strike. So they were in production for that. So we do know that season three is dropping whenever they get out of the writer's strike. But damn, D-Mac is gone, man. Now, Kendall said we're going to talk about Vic. Are we talking about Vic or Vic Damone Jr.? You know what I'm saying? Because there's a difference between Vic and Vic Damone Jr. Now, what movie is Vic Damone Jr. from? 
<laughs> what movie is Victor Moan Jr. from? Let me get a poll real quick. Who? Yeah, Money Talks. That was my movie right there. Uh, Vic. When's the first time we seen Vic? The first time we seen Vic. Oh, Vic was walking over to Claudia's house. All right, hold on. Give me a second. Let me find that. 